and welcome to Model Kit Stuff and in today's first impressions video we have this uh, Tamiya um, German six-wheeled heavy armoured car in 135 scale so it's a 231 one of my favourite armoured cars of all time now as you can see this used to be an Italeri kit and what basically happened is Tamiya took it on reworked it and added some extra bits and pieces which is what they say here new and retooled parts included so the new parts are a figure and an aluminium barrel and the reworked parts are largely um, the two hull where they put some weld seams on so you can see them here in the picture those weld seams they've added those onto the tool other than that, it's pretty much as released by Italeri. So Tamiya released this in 2016, so not that long ago. Uh, and Italeri released this as a new tool in 2004. So in my world, that's not too long ago either. Um, but I keep forgetting that's nearly 20 years ago now. So um, let's have a look at the kit. Now, before we go any further, I must say that I have built this um, only in the last 18 months or so um, so I know how well this uh, kit goes together uh, and if I think on at the end of the video I will uh, get my model down and show you what it looks like when built so we're going to do a first impressions sort of uh, last impressions all at the same time so as I said this is one of my favorite um, armored cars um, and uh, the reason is um, I, I like the configuration, I like the shape, um, but most of all I like the fact that it disproves what lots and lots and lots of people say about German tanks and proves that they don't know what they're talking about. So lots of people bang on about the T-34 and what a great tank it was and how it was a war winning weapon uh, and how it left German uh, tank design behind and um, how uh, the Germans didn't know anything about sloped armour um, and the Germans were left on the back foot and having to catch up. And some of that is true. But the comment that I regularly hear, I hear it fairly regularly, um, about Germans not understanding, German designers not understanding uh, sloped armour and its ballistic properties is a load of nonsense. And that is proved by the fact that their armoured cars all characteristically feature sloped armour for the very reason of ballistic impacts. Um, so the idea of sloped armour on an armoured car is that you can have a greater ballistic resistance than the thickness of the material because the slope means that you get a glancing blow, it takes out some of the energy um, we could go on all day about, about how that works, but basically it's a trade-off between um, weight and ballistic impact, and it allows the vehicle to be lighter, therefore more fuel efficient, have a longer range, be able to travel faster because they're using lighter materials. They didn't do that with tanks because they didn't feel they needed to. Um, they had a policy of armour thickness being heavy enough to withstand the impact of the gun mounted on the tank and the tank guns were designed to be heavier than what the enemy had therefore they felt they were safe with their design um, but obviously as tanks got heavier and uh, guns got bigger they needed to start deploying uh, sloped armour design and yes the Russians did it first and, and yes got the march on the Germans uh, absolutely but the Germans absolutely understood the ballistic understanding of sloped armour. Right, lecture over. Let's have a look at the kit. So our kit front is a typical Tamiya offering. We have um, a picture of um, the vehicle that we'll be modelling um, with the figure that's included um, with a, a, a neutral background. Um, then on the side we have the same and this side is also the same it has a kit number of 370241 just there um, 
and some stuff in Japanese. Um, tells you that there's two marking options, an aluminium gun barrel. Um, then we've got some um, imagery of the paint scheme, basically the German blue-grey. And um, on this side we have a picture of the model built up. So let's have a look inside. So inside we have a familiar set of Tami instructions. We have a bag with the figure in. We have a bag with two sprues in. We have our aluminium barrel and decals. And we have another bag with two sprues in containing the rest of the parts. So starting with the instructions, a uh, typical uh, layout we have there um, less than A4 size gatefold um, instruction format, which I find uh, it can be a bit problematic because you're constantly folding it. So um, not everyone likes the, likes that format. Uh, some people are not bothered it, I guess. Um, I would prefer a stapled A4 turn the page job, but there you go. Uh, so we have a black and white image of the completed model and uh, figure, which all looks good. Um, then we have uh, a little bit of history in multiple languages, which is also good. Good to have some history. Um, they are then recommending that the, you use their tools. Uh, and why wouldn't they? Um, as they always do. And then we have um, the caution notes. Um, we have some information um, about paints. Then we have some tips on how to construct, remove your parts, paint your parts, so on and so forth, which is always good. They do this little thing where they suggest you put some tape on so you can easily identify your sprue. Sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. It depends on how many sprues. I'm not going to do it on a small kit like this. It, it takes longer than the total time looking for sprues. Um, then it shows you the two paint options. And the, the two paint options really um, are the same but with different decals. Interestingly, um, we've got the 5th Armoured Reconnaissance Battalion, 2nd Panzer Division. doesn't give you a year. Um, and then it says unit unknown, so I don't know whether they've just made one up. Um, so at the end of the day, you're just going to go with the decals that you like, aren't you? So we start with step one and we're straight into putting together the um, main body of the vehicle. And as you can see, there is no interior detail. Um, so there's not even driver's seat or, or anything. So um, even though we've got separate hatches, you can't really have any of those open unless you're going to scratch build an interior. Um, so yeah, everything's shut. Uh, we do have um, a radiator which goes in there and they're telling you to paint that um, in um, F1, which will be black, no doubt. Um, and then we're putting the top parts on, we've got the um, engine covers, um, the Louvre um, air cover for the uh, radiator on the nose, and then we're flipping her over and putting the drive shaft in and the exhaust. And I can tell you all of that fits together beautifully. So then we're building up the undersized chassis. We've got the um, uh, exhaust system, uh, exhaust pipe going in, um, the uh, four-wheel drive system going in and the suspension uh, and the um, little protective plate at the back. And to be honest, almost none of this you can see once the model is built. Uh, then we've got the um, wheels going together and the tyres are really nicely detailed. Um, with all the um, uh, treads on it as you can see um, so it all goes together really nicely and 
Tamiya are calling out the colours as they go. Now I don't know how much reworking of the instructions Tamiya did, um, but this doesn't feel as busy as Tamiya instructions usually are. So I guess they're following the Italeri um, instruction format. Right, so then we have... Let's move that out of the way. Right. Then we're building up the front uh, wheel system. Now here I we had a little bit of uh, fiddly. Some of these parts are quite thin um, and you're popping them on. And it was a little bit fiddly, but um, we got there. Uh, the wheels go on, they look absolutely great when done. Um, and you can see there that we've got um, poly caps going in uh, for the wheels, which was nice. Then we have the uh, rear doors going in, the uh, vision ports uh, and the various little hatches going on. As you can see, um, what you've got to do is take the kit part and bend it over and glue it down to make the the hinge and it actually works really quite well and I have to say I I've built a few Italeri vehicles military trucks and the like and that they come up with some nice ideas and usually the detail is quite thin and fine and they do a good job I particularly liked their um, Opal Blitz and the the tracked version I forget the name of it now uh, they were quite fun uh, little kits to build. Right, then we have um, yeah, the, the um, ventilation for the engine and the ventilation for the crew going on. Uh, again, more bending of parts. Then we're drilling holes because some of the additional items are a um, couple of um, boxes or what they've actually done is they've changed the way the boxes work so they don't just sit on the top they have location holes to make the fit stronger whether it's needed I, I don't know um, but they don't do that on the front they use the system that was originally applied on the front so that's all our mud guards going on um, our um, additional fuel um, going on the tray there little uh, fuel can so that's what step 11. Step 12, we've got Pioneer tools going on. Um, so paint them separately and plop them on and they look all good when done. Um, and then we have the assembly on the uh, rear door. So we've got the, the wheel mounted on its uh, little drop down um, a frame there we've got the little light uh, rip, uh, lights going on and the mud flaps now the mud flaps need a little bit of thinning out um, to look uh, really really good but um, I seem to remember that I replaced mine with plastic card not 100% but I think that's what I did one thing Tamir are good at is showing you how to orientate things and they've done that there with the headlights um, and the uh, little indicator flickers uh, and the various other little um, lights, convoy lights and the like. And with all that built up, we can then move to the turret. So at step 15, uh, we are building up the turret. So um, we have the back end of the main gun there, and we have um, a gun barrel, which it says it's metal, it's turned aluminium. Um, and that goes into the mantle there. Um, we've got a little bit of drilling to do in in the hull, uh, sorry, in the turret roof, uh, and then we put all that together. Um, viewports could could be shown open, um, but you'd have to modify them to do that. Um, so I didn't in the end. Then you've got um, a frame that you're building for the machine gun, and I found um, that to look a little bit oversized. It was quite fiddly, um, so uh, a little bit of scra scraping of the seam on that and uh, try and make that look uh, a little bit better. Um, we've got the uh, drip gutter to go over the top, little grab handle, some nice little um, doors there that could be posed open if you wanted to put a commander figure in. 
um, but you'd have to make sure you can't see in because there's nothing in there particularly. Um, and then step 18, we're building up the smoke canisters um, and the front headlights. Now, the only thing really missing from the smoke canisters is you're going to need to scratch build the cabling um, that was used to um, set them off. So what you what you need is something that goes from the canister all the way up the bonnet. But I'll show you that when I show you the model. Um, and then in step 19, we are putting together and painting the figure um, and painting the uh, wing mirrors and putting our mud flaps in. So 19 steps in all. Then we have our paint instructions. So, I mean, really the, the paint instructions are the same. It's really just where to put your decals and there's some helpful tips there on the decals. So that is the instructions done. So in our little bag with the decals, we have another little bag and a piece of card and we have a turned aluminium barrel, which is um, got a nice open end. Um, so it's very nice indeed. It fits perfectly and looks brilliant under paint. So that's a really nice little feature actually. And then our decals um, are mainly the uh, registration plates, national markings. These little white lines are actually to go on the smoke canisters, two for each one. Um, they were a little fiddly to put on, but actually went down quite well, given that they're um, quite thick. Um, and then you've got a choice of decals depending on your paint scheme or you could just mix them up given that they're a bit fictional. So then we have our figure which is the major addition um, that Tamiya made to this kit. Um, so figures are always the most expensive item to uh, design so they, you know by putting a figure in they did up the cost or the value. And it's a nice figure actually. It comes with um, three different heads. So you've got the early style beret, you've got the later cap, and then you've got a commander's peaked cap as well. Um, so three different heads. Um, and then other than that, it's arms and shoes. Is um, Arms are... Uh, one of them's in his pocket and the other one is gloved and holding a glove. Then you've got a combination of different things there. You've got um, a map bag, um, your pistol holster and a um, set of binoculars. And actually, he looks quite good when done. So this is, this is him painted up. So um, you can see I went for the commander's version. Um, yeah, and I thought he looked all right when when painted up. So I was quite quite happy with that. I'm no figure painter, um, but yeah, I was quite happy with him as it happens. Right, so the next bag has two sprues, and you know that these sprues have come from Italeri because they come in a heat sealed bag. Only the figure comes in a mechanically fastened stapled bag which is how Tamiya always work so you know what's come from where. Now uh, the moulding tool was reworked for this and what Tamiya did is added some uh, welding seam lines which is a welcome addition um, to the model and does add something to it, breaks up the slabs a little bit but fundamentally this is um, uh, a rolled plate um, slab construction so there isn't a lot of um, detail to go on these sides so it just looks right because it's right. Now um, when we look at this the um, the parts are nice and crisp there is no flash there is uh, not much in the way of sink there's there is tiny tiny amount of sink just in there. In fact, under paint, it, it's not noticeable. I didn't clean clean it up, um, but you can see it in the light. Um, 
what we've got is an underside that's um, molded in one um, but it's good enough because you don't really see it um, but oh, there's plenty of detail there so if you wanted to show it um, partly off the road or, or something like that you could absolutely do that and, and it would look fine um, it's the same with this we've got um, We've got some nice little detail there at the front with the with the bolts on. The hinges are nicely depicted and, and as we've said the welding seam adds to it. We've got the spring suspension already moulded in there. There's a bit of seam cleaning up needed but that's about it. Um, but all the detail you want is there. The lip on the uh, mud guards and fenders is all done correctly. All looks really nice. A little bit of seam to clean off, off the exhaust and the exhaust does need opening up at the end um, but otherwise all very nice okay so this is sprue B and what we have on here is a collection of parts so we've got the front grille there and it's very very delicately moulded it's really really nice looks very authentic no need for etch replacements or anything like that Another highlight is the um, uh, cover for the uh, back tyre there. It's very nicely detailed with some sag in the material and, and the uh, tread from the tyre coming through. We've got the exhaust um, manifold there. Various different doors. The rear doors have um, handles on the inside but they're, it's a bit basic. Um, we've got the various different lids for boxes and hatches there's the a-frame for the tire which you can actually um, do in the down position if you wanted if you were creative you could make that work got the pioneer tools the little drain points and the vision holes um, again all the little drains and very delicate nicely done um, as are the pioneer tools there's our um, transmission shaft that's the internal bit for the gun but you don't really see that you really want to have have the hull closed up there's a bit of flash you can see on the handle there but nothing major a bit of seam clean clean up and the straps are already on so you could replace those if you wanted with some thin white card or or etch the machine gun's got the little dimples in um, so that looks okay once painted up um, and you can see that the, the main gun there that we're replacing with the aluminium is vastly improved by the aluminium mainly because that we get the correct flare on the end there. Um, we've got little lifting hooks and bits and pieces which all add to the complete look of it. I think probably the worst part as I've said is this here which is the assembly of this gun rail. Um, I didn't like that really at all. The gun pivots on this little clip, but in reality would work its way all the way around there wherever it was needed. Um, and I think I seem to think I drilled the, the little dimples, I drilled those out into holes, but it's a bit thick and heavy, and that's probably the low light of the, of the whole thing. Um, but otherwise... Uh, it's all quite nice and, and, and well done and uh, no issues with it at all. And then the last bag has two of these sea sprues so they're covering off mainly the, the wheels and bits and pieces. Now the tyres the, the are really nicely done, we've got all the little writing on the side walls which is a really nice feature they're correctly recessed we've got the, the fasteners um, as we'd expect for a kit of this age um, around the hub um, we've got the little doors and and little um, strange little hatch there that you have to bend over you can see there's a little line at the back which is your bending point so they help you with that um, we've got the little hubs there that vent hubs that domes that go on the top and then we've got these mud flaps which have a nice amount of animation on them but they're all animated the same so it all looks uniform which is, is wrong um, 
And we've got some quite nice little fine parts here like the indicator flappers. Um, and then we've got the hub covers there as well, which are a, a distinctive feature. Um, so yeah. So that is it. That is all there is to the kit. Um, so what are my first impressions? Well, as I said, I've built the kit and I'm going to show you that in a sec. Um, I found it a fun little project. It didn't take too long to knock together. Uh, it's not exactly a weekend project, maybe a couple of weekends. Um, but it goes together really, really well. It looks the part when done. Um, it's got the right level of detail to be able to build it straight out of the box without any uh, major concerns and bother. Um, the figure's a nice little addition because it, it starts you off for a, a diorama. And um, yeah, I, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, no issues with it uh, at all. Um, so let's have a look at what it looked like when it was done. Now I will start by saying that this is a diorama um, that actually got damaged um, when bringing it back from um, display at a model show. So um, it did have um, the figure that came in the kit was stood there um, and then I had another couple of figures, uh, one stood there and then one walking over here. Um, so there was four figures, I just need to glue them back on. Um, but that figure playing with the cat has stayed on. Uh, what you can see is we needed to add the uh, smoke, um, kept the cables that detonate the smoke canisters. So I use some easy line um, for that um, and that is the correct positioning. I've only got two on there so it, it's sort of suggesting that it's already been um, detonated. Um, and actually they should go round the front, not to the back, but it's a bit of artistic license for ease. Um, but yeah, you can see um, it came together really quite well. The, the Pioneer tools are a nice little breakup of all that blue grey. The wheels and tyres all look good when done. Um, you can see what I mean about this area here. That's the bit that looks like, feels like it needs a little bit of reworking, but it did go together okay. The, the, the gun is sort of forced in a downwards position because of how this is mounted. Um, you could do with the rail being up a little bit, but no matter. You can see how the aluminium gun barrels come out. That looks quite nice. And those are the decals, and the decals went on. Uh, as long as you make sure the joins underneath, they, they look all right when done. And then you can see that gives you some nice options for, for washers and weathering and so on. So, yeah. And then with a little bit of dusty weather, weathering around the wheels, you can come up with something that looks quite realistic. So I was quite pleased with it. Um, it was uh, quite a bit of fun. It actually took longer to do the cobblestone base than to actually do the... Uh, kit itself but it's a it's a nice little uh, rendition of the vehicle and like I say a um, couple of weekends and you can knock that off and have something that's quite a nice little display piece so there you have it that is our uh, Tamiya six wheel drive heavy armoured car um, ex Italeri um, I hope that was useful and interesting it's a nice little kit so if you're interested in one, I certainly would recommend it. Thanks for looking in. Enjoy your modelling. Take care and I will see you very, very soon.